This is a call for an uprising. Welcome to today's show. Stories like this are not good news. Not good news for me, not good news for you. Really, it's not good news for anyone out there. But before I read the story, unfortunately, every time I do one of these, I have to state that this in no way is any type of hate speech. I am simply reading a news article or various news articles that are out in the public about an event that occurred. The opinion that I give is not hate speech, nor is it to affect anyone involved. And if such speech was censored here on YouTube, there would be litigation involved, and the consequences of that would be not fun for either side. So a subscriber of my channel by the name of B. Robinson sent me this. And this is not good. Two conspiracy theorists who claim that the church shooting, which killed 26, was staged by the government and have been arrested for harassing congregation and threatening to hang a pastor whose daughter died in the massacre. Now, obviously, this is relating to the Texas shooting. Of course, the church has been torn to the ground after the fact. When people read this, they kind of just go, oh, these people are crazy conspiracy theorists, right? That uh, they took a conspiracy to the point where they were threatening to kill people. Now, we don't know that for sure, but we know that the media can take a story and twist it however they want. If somebody gets too close to uncovering truth, right, just say these people had some type of evidence, and I'm not familiar with who they are. I just looked them up. They, uh, they have a website called Side Thorn and a YouTube channel. I've never seen them before, but, um, you know, I'm going to look into them and see what they're about. But obviously they would want the narrative to be what? The crazy conspiracy person who questions the government and questions events being staged is threatening to kill and murder people, which I find very, very irresponsible as far as the reporting on it goes. Because you can't just say, well, we heard somebody yell it or we heard someone scream because I could say the same thing about anybody else and so can you. But the fact that they're trying to censor people in this way and then report on it and say we, be, we all need to watch out because there's conspiracy theorists out there who believe this stuff so much that their mental health becomes a problem, right? And what are we hearing with the stuff from Valentine's Day? That's the main thing they're talking about with the gun control movement. They're not, they're trying to word it. So they go, well, we're not talking about taking everyone's guns away. So don't be so paranoid. If you're a hunter or you're someone who owns a gun and wants to protect your home, we're talking about these mentally unstable people. So then it goes down to, well, who do you deem mentally unstable? And guess who falls into that quarter category, you and me. And why do they deem us mentally unstable? Because we refuse to believe their narrative because we critically think because we question things because we look at things and we go. There's an agenda behind it. The main people out there, the zombies who exist, are naive. They're people who get walked on their whole lives. They let their job and their workplace walk on them. They let their relationships, the people in them, walk on them. They let their fam- because they never question things. And they just always want to pity themselves and then post it on Facebook. People like us, we question things because there's holes in stories. You know, you get people laughing after some of these events when they're supposed to be emotional. You get people the same day of the event calling for gun grabs instead of crying or actually caring. Regular people go, it's a little weird, you know, it's like I said in the video I did a couple weeks ago that a bird, you know, when a bird runs into my window and dies, I get upset about it. I'm not going to, you know, cry a ball of tears. I get upset. It bothers me. It might bring a tear or two because it's sad because it's not a way that a bird should die. Because we probably shouldn't have these stupid windows that we had. Right? But that's emotion about a bird. Imagine these people, if you really lost a friend, things like this. So let's read the story about these conspiracy theorists who uh, supposedly have been arrested over uh, questioning something or quote unquote threatening. The creators of a conspiracy website that accused the U.S. government of faking recent mass murders were arrested at First Baptist Church in Sutherland Springs, Texas, after claiming the shooting was staged. Well, why wouldn't they have the right to go there and claim it was staged? I mean, if we're talking about a right to protest, if people can stand outside the White House and push times up in feminism, if if, uh, we have trans people and gay people who could stand outside and push the fact that uh, we're supposed to, you know, get on board with 
two-year-olds being trans and stuff like that. They can say stuff like that. Why can't these people question something and say it was staged? If they're not scared, why would they arrest them? Oh, because they're going to say suddenly that they started threatening to hang people. Yeah, that sounds sure. The church pastor, Frank Pomeroy, told the San Antonio Express News that he was in his car in the parking lot of the church on Monday when the uh, the person, I guess, of the website, I won't say his name, and his partner approached the building. Now, I think that means partner, as in they work on the same website. He said he intervened when intervened when one of the two people began defacing a pastor left outside the church for the 26 victims who were killed in November 2016 by gunman Devin Patrick Kelly. The pastor who lost his 14-year-old daughter in the shooting said that these men scrawled the words, the truth shall set you free, excuse me, screamed the words, the truth shall set you free, across the memorial poster. Well, if this pastor actually knew what those words were from, because they're from the Bible, okay? Not sure if he knows that. So if somebody, somebody writes that outside your church and uh, you're a pastor, you probably should know it's from the Bible. But anyway, he said the pair who alleged that the shooting was staged by the U.S. government of Homeland Security and also claimed that the, the preacher's daughter never existed and demanded that the pastor show him the girl's birth certificate. I just told him there was enough evidence already visible. That's what he told the outlet. So if he chooses not to see that, how would I know he would believe anything else? Then the men made threats toward the pastor. Contin- they continually yelled and screamed and hollered and told him he was going to hang from a tree and then they were going to pee on him while hanging. A member of the church who witnessed the incident called police. The Wilson County Sheriff's Office confirmed that the two were arrested, but did not provide the information uh, as far as the formal charges, saying the incident, incident is still being investigated. So, allegedly, these men confront the guy, and they say, show us some evidence, using their right to free speech. Now, harassment is a fine line, right? Anybody could say someone, I could say somebody's harassing me on my channel, right? So you could say someone's harassing you in the comment section, right? But what a coincidence that somebody had to be there and said they were threats, right? Because that's all it takes in this flawed system we have. Somebody can make up allegations against you and then have another person who's a Freemason just like them or whatever, Satanist just like them and say, oh yeah, I heard him say it. So I don't even like to leave the house. I mean, it, I really feel that way. You know, I'd rather have cabin fever and go down that way mentally than deal with, you know, some of the stuff they try to set people up with. And I'm not saying that these people are innocent or not, but let's read between the lines, right? What you can and can't say. Why can certain people get away with protesting certain things, right? Why can people uh, march on Washington next week for the incident on Valentine's Day, why can feminists march? Why can anti-Trumps? They can march something. But if these people feel like there's a issue with this, they feel like they didn't hear enough evidence to believe it, why can't they go there and question it? They have a right to free speech. Now, you can say it's harassment if they, you know, cross a line of showing up maybe on their property, it's the person's, in, you know, his home, right? The, the pastor's home, if they show up there and they walk around his property, okay. Then maybe somebody could say, hey, this is, you're crossing a line here. This is where he lives, his family lives. But they didn't do that. They showed up at the church, right? The new church, I suppose, because the other one was torn down very quickly after the event. So the two men, 54 and 56, are behind the conspiracy theorist site called Sidethorn. The pair post videos they claim as proof that the government is behind several recent mass murders. I won't, uh, mass, yeah, murders, excuse me, including, uh, I won't say which ones, but the main ones, right? Vegas, Boston, you know, Florida, Connecticut, you can figure it out for yourself. And the article goes on to talk about 26 people were killed at this event, including eight members of one family and a five-year-old were killed in the November 5th shooting. Uh, the gunman fled the church, but died from a self-inflicted gunshot after the two armed residents pursued him so what i'm just trying to say is show you this article is out there because remember they're going to try to take our and this is the reason that these people in the mainstream like kimmel and fallon and all these guys keep talking about us it's not just because they need to deflect and they're afraid of us it's because they're going to use this mentally unstable stuff 
against us. Because how can somebody define if somebody's mentally unstable? They don't know what's inside the person's head, right? They don't know what's in there until what? After the event happens, they go, oh, we should have mentally evaluated him. Okay, so then what? You go through his life and see oh, all these things or what he owns or what magazines he reads. Right, exactly. So then they'll suddenly go, well, they look at conspiracy websites, so they're mentally unstable. People like me, oh, they have channels. They talk about this stuff. They're mentally unstable. Right? So we shouldn't be allowed to have free speech. We shouldn't be allowed to have guns. We're the dangerous threats. And they throw us in FEMA camps. It's as easy as that. And you're going to see more stories like this come out. Right? And again, I don't know who these people are. I don't know what they really did. And maybe they did harass and go too far. Maybe they did. But at the same time, you know that they're licking their chops to get stories like this out there. Because the end game result is they want to declare all of us mentally unstable, mentally sick, a problem. Detriment to society, people who won't go along with stuff, typically Christians, right? Because we refuse to accept everything. They call us bigots, hateful, crazy people, right? And that's why there's so many empty white padded rooms and so many FEMA camps ready for people like us because they've left them open while there's lunatics running around who are dressing their two-year-old kids up, you know, yeah, two-year-old sons are dressing them in a dress and saying their two-year-old son's now a girl, but they're saving those Places for people like us who question things in the mainstream. Really sad. And it's scary. We'll see how this evolves and, um, you know, what comes of it. But I'll keep you posted if I hear more. But I wanted to make you guys aware. This is the type of stuff that's just going to keep going on. I thank you for listening to today's show. God bless all of you and your families.